Hey, can we give all the fathers a hand clap today? Yes. Happy Father's Day. I know sometimes in church it's Father's Day. It's like, come on, dads, do better, but not today. We just want to celebrate you and thank you for all that you've done and you do. And no matter where you are in your story of fatherhood, we, we just want to say thank you. Happy Father's Day. We pray that you all enjoy this day and that you are blessed and you're celebrated. And um, thank you so much for everything and loving on your kids. And you make our church better because of that. You make this community better uh, because of that. So happy Father's Day. Um, I, I do want to get right into the word of the Lord today. And uh, um, I, I want to read to you a scripture. Uh, it's found in Psalms chapter 112. Psalms 112. And I want to read the heart of the Father today. Today I'm going to talk about the heart of the Father, the heart of our, our Lord Jesus Christ today. Um, it's found um, in Psalms 112. I'm going, to, I'm going to start in the first verse. It says this, Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying His commands. Their kids will be successful everywhere. An entire genera- generation of godly people will be blessed. Man, I want that for my kids. Isn't that cool? It says this, and their kids will be successful everywhere. You want that for your kids? Are you, are you with me? Is anybody with me this morning? Does anybody want their kids to be successful? God wants you to be successful, y'all. And um, I received that word right there, man. And uh, it says this, an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. It says, they themselves will be wealthy, and their good deeds will last forever. The light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, they are compassionate, and they are righteous. Man, let that be so for me and my kids. I want to be generous, I want to be compassionate, and I want to be righteous. That's the word of the Lord. I mean, God, let that be so for me. And, and when I read this scripture, and although it's talking about about when, God, when people live a godly lives, that's what happens with your kids. Like you become generous and compassionate and, and, and righteous. But I think that this is a, a, a passage of scripture that the Father wants for us as his kids. Like he wants us to be generous. He wants us to be compassionate. He, he wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be a people that are, are, are successful everywhere. We, he wants us every day that we touch, he wants us to, to walk in the favor of God. That's what he wants for our lives. And today I want to talk to you just about that and what he wants to do in you. Let me invite God to be here. Uh, then we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you may be here. God, we pray that you may do what you always do. Is that Take your word and divide it a few different times so that we all can hear your word personally, Lord. God, we didn't gather here together and get ready and get our families ready to hear from me. Another man with another idea, another thought, but God, we came here to hear from you. So Lord, I pray that you may bypass my thoughts, my opinions, my emotions, and Lord, speak right through me to your people, Lord. Lord, we need a word from you, Lord. We want to hear from you. A lot of us going through life, the future that looks unclear, but God, we needed something that would change the trajectory of our lives and our families' lives. So God, we pray that you may be with us today in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen, amen. Uh, I want to, I want to talk to you today about the the greatest tool that the that God uses to make us into the kids that we just read about. The greatest tool that the Father uses to make us into great kids that He calls us to be, to great sons and daughters that He's called us to be. I think about you know, uh, growing up, and, you know, growing up, there's a lot of things that, that kids don't do in today's world that we did back in the days, right? And there's so many things that we did back in the days. I remember growing up, we were, we will ride in the back of a pickup truck. Anybody rode in the back of a pickup truck? Like nowadays, no one rides in the back of a pickup truck, especially little kids. In fact, if you, if you get caught riding in the back of a pickup truck and you are a kid, you would get pulled over and you would get put on Channel 7 News as a, a child abuser, y'all. I, I remember growing up, we would hang out outside in our neighborhoods without having a cell phone. Anybody ever did that? Like, like actually roam your neighborhoods and... And uh, the only rule was you had to be home when what came on? The street lights came on, and uh, you had to be home. And you could tell all the people who had strict parents and, and, and maybe liberal parents, right? Because, man, when those lights came on, the strict parent uh, kids, they were out like roaches, y'all. They were out of there, y'all. 
this real quick. Oh, I remember growing up, we would um, ride bicycles. Remember, the, remember bicycles? And uh, we would put kids on our handlebars. Anybody ever rode on a handlebar? Your friend ever rode? You were a real friend if you rode your friend around the neighborhood with him on the handlebar. Come on, somebody. Uh, so many good things that we used to be. Uh, I remember growing up, like, you had to actually be good at the sport to get a trophy. You remember that those days? <laughs> Nowadays, all you got to do is just show up. You could be terrible and still get a trophy, y'all. <laughs> uh, there, there's so many things that we, that we had growing up um, that, uh, that now, you remember, like, remember the idea of walking to school? <laughs> you guys remember that? You guys don't remember that, huh? <laughs> we had to walk to school and walk home. And nowadays, you either get on the bus or in the carpool line, y'all. Don't you dare walk to school. Um, and there's so many things that we did uh, growing up um, that nowadays, as parents, even myself, like, we, we want to protect our kids from, right? We, like, I mean, even my kids can't go outside right, riding their bike without having a helmet on, elbow pads, knee pads, shin pads, everything, you know? Like, because we, we, we want to protect our kids from pain. And it's, it's, it's the idea is that, hey, I, I don't want my kids walking to school because something may happen to them, right? I, I don't want my kids to be on, on a, a pickup truck, rightfully so, because something may happen to them, right? And I think we're living in a generation where we, we love to protect our kids from pain. But the problem with our relationship with our Heavenly Father is that he doesn't protect us from pain. In fact, he uses pain to make us and to mold us into the kids that he's calling us to be. And I want to talk to you today about pain and how God uses this, and it's one of the greatest tool, tools in his toolbox that he uses to chisel us, to make us into the people that we're called to be. And so today I want to look at pain in a different way because oftentimes when we see pain, we, we are, are immediately think about the devil. But I want to let you know that God uses pain to make us more like him, to make us to, into the kids where everything we do would be successful, that, every, that we would be generous and that we would be compassionate and that we would be righteous. He's making us into great sons and daughters of God. But we know that pain doesn't feel good, and we don't like walking through pain with situation. But I want to encourage you that every pain that you go through, it will grow you. And it will make you into the man or woman that God is calling you to be. And on this Father's Day, I want to talk to you how our Heavenly Father literally uses pain to make us into the people that he's called us to be. He will use that heartbreak. He will use that disappointment. He will use that layoff of that job. He will use that financial situation. He will use that, that time where you, you got let down and, and the person who was close to you let you down. He will, he will use all those pain, and he will use it to make you into someone who's going to be great in this life. But the problem is, is that we identify pain as something that only comes from the devil or the enemy. But I want to let you know that sometimes God uses pain to make us more like him. I, I'm reminded of Moses. You guys remember Moses, right? And God, and God set the people free, right? And the people were in Egypt, and they were, they were bound to the Egyptians, and they were slaves to the Egyptians, and they were, they were bound, and they had to work many hours a day. They had no life. And one day God called Moses and said, go to Egypt and set my people free. So Moses, Moses go to Egypt, and he sets the people free. And as they left Egypt, something crazy happens. As he was walking in freedom, Pharaoh came to his senses and said, you know what? Those are my slaves. Those are my people. And so literally Pharaoh gathered his powerful army and he's chasing after the Israelites. And right after God set the people free, now they're on the run and they're about to experience this turbulence that's literally going to change their lives forever. And so literally what happens is that Moses literally experienced freedom, the Israelites experienced freedom, and right after they experienced freedom, they experienced turbulence. And as they, as they were crossing the Red Sea, like God did something powerful, right? Um, the, the people of Israel and, and Moses came out of the other side of the Red Sea. And while Pharaoh's army was in the middle of the Red Sea, they were all killed and they were all uh, overflowed with the water of the Red Sea. And literally what the enemy and what God would teach us is that literally 
what he does in our lives is that sometimes when we go through painful situations and turbulent situations, it's God trying to kill in us that's what's been chasing us, that's what's been trying to enslave us, that's what's trying to keep us from our destiny. And sometimes if I was Moses, I would have viewed that moment in history as God leaving me, but literally God viewed that moment of history of God leading him into his destiny. And I want to encourage you all today, if you're walking through painful situations, or if you walk through painful situations, or if you will walk through painful situations, is God trying to kill something that is prohibiting you from walking in your destiny, y'all? I am preaching so good right now, and I'm getting no amens, so I'm just going to fan myself and preach to myself. So I want to encourage you all today that I know that like in church circles, we come to church and everything's going to be all cool and nice and God's going to give you a breakthrough. But the really problem is that God uses pain in your life to, to mold you and to make you into the people that God's calling you to be. I remember like, uh, I remember growing up and uh, we, I grew up in Miami, Florida, and there's canals everywhere, canals everywhere. And whenever you see a canal, you, you, you know there's alligators in there. And so my friends and I, though, we would go to these canals and we would try to skip rocks and we would try to get as low as possible and as, 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 as close to the water as possible so that we can uh, skip rocks. And um, anyways, I, I, I went to uh, uh, hanging out with my friends. My, one, one of my friends, he skipped the rocks six times. So I said, you know, I'm going to get real close to the water, real close to the edge of the water, and I'm going to skip these rocks. Because normally what the canal was, it's like you would have a canal, and then literally there was like a six feet uh, like, like drop between the, the sidewalk and then the canal. And so we would go down as low as possible to get closer to the canal. And the canals are super deep, the super dark, na nasty water. Um, you, could, you cannot see in the bottom at all. And so uh, and at this point, I didn't know how to swim, so I, I tried to skip a rock. I ended up sliding on the rocks and sliding right into that canal. And I couldn't swim at all. And luckily, there was a, a person who was, who was fishing literally about 30 yards down the canal, and he jumped in the area where I fell down, where I, I fell in the water. He ended up pulling me out of the water and saved my life. And literally, I'm not here uh, if it wasn't for that guy who was 30 yards down the thing. But let me tell you what, that painful situation, you know now, I would never get close to a canal again, y'all, ever again. And I learned my lesson from that moment, y'all. I, I remember another moment when I had growing up. Uh, um, I, I, my, so I, I'm going to kind of give you, don't judge me, y'all. You ready? Don't judge me. So in my backyard, we have banana trees, right? And banana trees uh, in Miami, they grow, they grow everywhere. So we have banana trees in our backyard. And, and when the bananas are not in season, uh, they're, they're, the leaves turn into like uh, these uh, brown leaves or whatever. And so my brother and I, we had an idea. And so how about we kind of smoke the banana leaves, you know, because we obviously, you know, we have heard of people doing drugs, but we, 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 we did banana leaves, y'all. Come on, somebody. Um, so what we would do, we'd get the, the brown banana leaves, and we would soak them into te tequila, let them dry in the sun, and then we'd wrap them in regular paper and smoke it, y'all. I like real thugs or gangsters or whatever. So anyways, so we, were, we got caught smoking banana leaves, and my uncle came home, right? My uncle lived with us at that point, at, at moment. He came home. And he went outside and got the smallest switch you can find. And let me give you the insight. When you have a small switch, it's more dangerous than a big switch. Because a small switch are, is painful, little pain. It's just like, pa 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 pa. And so what my uncle did is that he grabbed me by my shoulder, his big hands grabbed me by my shoulder, and literally spanked me so bad. Y'all, I mean, it's just like, pa 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 pa. And you know what he said before he spanked me? Son. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you, right? And really what he was saying was, hey, you're going to learn from this, and you're going to grow from this. And guess what, y'all? After that day, guess what? I never smoked again, y'all. I never touched a banana tree, y'all. I never looked at bananas. In fact, I went 10 years without eating a banana, y'all. <laughs> because you learn from painful situations. And oftentimes, we want a Christian faith that's a void of pain, and then we question our faith when pain comes. But the, what we should be doing is questioning, God, what are you trying to teach me, and what are you trying to develop in me in this painful situation? Because every pain that you're going to in this season is preparing you for your next season. 
In every painful situation you're walking into your marriage, in your finances, and in your career, and in your job, or whether you're in school or high school or college, every painful situation that you walk into in this season literally is preparing you for your next level of destiny that God has taken you. So literally, don't look at pain as a thing from the enemy. Look at pain as God's trying to chisel you into the people that God's called you to be. Like, I, I question, like, uh, even in our marriage, like, you know, we, I question, question painful, painful seasons. God, what are you doing in our marriage? Like, in, in my kids? God, what are you doing in my kids? Like, in, in, in our church? God, what are you doing in our church? And I, I question the painful moments, but then I begin to realize and remind myself that he's preparing me for something even greater for the next season. You even look at the book of, the book of John, chapter 15, when, when, when Jesus was teaching about the vine, and he says that the Father, he prunes the vine, right? He prunes it so that the vine can grow even more fruit, right? So meaning there is a moment of time where the vine needs to experience pain in order for it to produce fruit. And for us, we think producing fruit is only in the great moments, in the moments we walk across the stage and graduate, in the moments where we, we walk. I remember I thought that my destiny was going to be found when I crossed the stage and got my degree and my master's degree. But I didn't realize that my destiny was going to be found when I was in a dark room crying out to God, seeking after God, because that's when God speaks to you the most. He uses those painful situations. And on this Father's Day, I want to let you know that your Heavenly Father loves you so much. He cherishes you so much that he lets you walk through pain so you can be molded to the person that he's called you to be. I, I want to give you three, three simple ways of what, what pain does and how he can mold us to the, 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 the being the kids who are generous, compassionate, and righteous. Number one is that pain, literally what it does, it exposes us to the joy of knowing God personally. Pain exposes us to the joy of knowing God on a personal level. Right? I love that, right? Because pain will cause you to run to your father. It will cause you to run to your savior. And God has to put something in your life where you need him. God never wants you to have a life where you don't need him. Where everything is perfect. All your finances is perfect. Your marriage is perfect. Your kids is perfect. Your career is perfect. You're satisfied with everything. There's nothing that you need in this life at all. Everything is drop dead perfect. And God will say to you, that is not the life he wants you. He always wants you to be in a position where you have to cry out to him for salvation and for help. Always. And so what pain does is that pain trains your heart to run after God. In fact, I want to read to you this scripture. This is really cool, right? This is one of the coolest scriptures I've read in a long time. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. I'm going to read the New International Version first. It says this, Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I will be speaking the truth, right? So, like, literally, this is what Paul says. Like, even if I said I'm all that in a bag of chips, I won't be lying. I am as fly as they come. That's what he's really saying, right? And he says this, but I refrain so no one would think more of me than, than is warranted by what I do or say or because of these, these surpassingly great revelations that I have. Therefore, check this out, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Isn't that good, y'all? Literally what, what, what Paul is saying, what the enemy used to torment me, God's going to use to transform me into the image of his son. And what the enemy thought was going to drive me crazy literally drove me to the Father and drove me to the altar and drove me to prayer and drove me to God's word. Come on, that's good stuff right there. But I got, a new, I got another version for you, right? Check out this version right here. This version here is really cool. The message version, the next one, right? It says, I'm going to read it once again. It says this. If I had the, ma- the mind to brag a little, I could possibly do it without looking ridiculous because I'm that cool. I'd still be speaking plain truth all the way long, all day long. I'll still be speaking the truth, Paul says. But I'll spare you. 
It says, I don't want anyone imagining me as anything other than the fool you encounter if you saw me on the street or heard me talk. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't have a big head, God, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Oh, wow. I'm going to read that again. He says, I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me connected with my limitations. Satan angels did his best to get me down what in fact was was done to push me to my knees, y'all. Come on, y'all. That's God's word. So literally what what, what Paul is saying, I was given the gift of, of pain to make me connected to my limitations because you just might get conceited enough and big head enough and you lose sight of what God's brought you from. You ever had those religious people in church? They lost and they forgot about where they came from. And God's delivered them and God saved them and touched their lives and blessed their finances. And they forgot the ramen noodle stage of their life. They forgot the one dollar chicken stage of their life. Come on, somebody. And now you want to thank you all that because you can eat root Chris all day. Oh, I can't eat root Chris all day. Come on, somebody. I'm over a Chipotle budget, y'all. Come on. <laughs> But literally, you forgot where you came from. And so literally what God has to do is put pain in your life to keep you connected to your limitations, to keep you connected to to really real life. And I want to encourage you all that pain comes so that you can always stay connected to your limitations and connected to the grace of God. There's never a moment in life where you don't need God's grace, y'all. Come on, can we give God a hand clap for that? He's using grace. He is using grace. Using it in your life. So, so our Father, he uses pain so we can be connected to our human side. And that we don't get so big-headed and so conceited that we realize that we don't need God. So not only does he use pain so that we can know him more and produce us closer to him. Secondly, is that he uses pain to, to, uh, so that we can experience the presence and the power of God's church. He uses pain so that we can experience the presence and the power of the local church. And I want to encourage you all today that in my most painful moments, in my most painful times, I always thought that I should walk through that by myself. But I realized that the greatest healings I've had in my life are not by myself. They've always been in the context of God's people. God literally never allows you to experience healing alone. And I was, telling, I was talking to the men last night. We had a group of men got together to have a good time, and we had a great time. And I told them, in my 10-year history of being in a full-time ministry and counseling many people and walking to people who have many addictions, I have never, ever, ever seen someone overcome addictions, overcome pain, or struggle by themselves. It's never been done before. Literally, Pain is undefeated when it's fighting someone who's isolated. Pain is literally, struggle is undefeated. It's never lost. It's better than the Golden State Warriors. Come on, somebody. It's better than those sorry Dallas Cowboys. Come on, somebody. Pain is undefeated when it's fighting someone alone. And literally what God does is that God puts you in circumstances and situations where you have to lean on God's people to get you through it. And we want to live life alone. And God says you can't live life alone because you can't overcome alone. And this is why we ask you to get in small groups, start serving, get off the sidelines, get involved in church. Because it is in the context of God's people where you experience the greatest healing from the greatest pain that you had in your life. And God chisels you and he makes you into his son and to the image of his son when you go to God's people. Pain will literally always push you to the presence and the power of the local church. And lastly, my third point is this. Not only will pain push you to your knees and drive you to God and knowing God personally, and not only will it drive you to the presence and the power of his church, But lastly, is that pain literally will drive you to the thrill to be used by God. It will drive you to the moment where you need God and you need the Savior to move on your behalf. 
and that you need the Father to move on your behalf. And on this Father's Day, I want to let you know that God uses every painful moment to prepare you for the next destiny and the next assignment that God has for your life. And you thought that your marriage went through hardship just for your marriage going through hardship. No, but God's put your marriage through hardship so that you can encourage other marriages that walk through hardship, so that your marriage can be prepared for the next season. Literally, everything that, is, the, everything that we see and that we trust goes through a series of testing. Thank God that airplanes that we fly on, they go through testing. In fact, in fact we want the airplanes to go through testings, right? Because the testing and the painful moments and the hardship moments are the moments where the airplanes prove to us that they, we can rely on them thousands of feet in the air. And literally the painful situation that you walk through, they're testing moments. They're moments where God is evaluating your heart, evaluating your worship, evaluating your response in the midst of the pain. He's giving you these tests so that you can become the people that God can use to do great things. There's not one person outside Scripture that God used that didn't walk through pain. And God says today on His Father's Day, He's a perfect Father to us. And He wants to use you to do great things. He wants to use your life. He wants to use you to bless your family, to bless your neighborhood, to bless your job, to bless your coworkers, to bless your classmates. He wants, you, he wants to use you. He wants to put you in certain positions, doctors, lawyers, car dealers, like business owners, entrepreneurs. He, he wants to put you in all over the world. He wants you to do it. And he wants to use you. But he has to put you through testing because he's a great father today. And I want to encourage you all on this Father's Day that the testing is only for a season. And he's only trying to see what he's going to do. He's, he's making you to the man and the woman that God's called you to be so that you can be used in a greater way. So if your marriage walked through testing, just know the testing is a sign that you are to be used, that you're going to be used in a greater level of anointing. If you're walking through hardship and you're walking through personal anxiety, personal depression, personal pain and testing, just know that God is using that to make you and get you ready for the next season of calling, the next season of purpose. If you are a business owner in here and your business has hit a plateau and he's walking through hardship and it doesn't seem like it's, it's going to turn a corner, it doesn't seem like the sales are turning a corner, I want to encourage you all today that God is using this season as a testing for you to evaluate yourself, to get better, to prepare you for what's next in your life today. God wants to use pain to make you and to the man or the woman and the kids that he's calling us to be. Can I get an amen today? Come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise today? Come on, can you stand to your feet? Can you stand to your feet? We're so excited for the word of the Lord today. Would you all bow your heads with me today? We want to invite God to be here and invite God to touch your heart, no matter where you are or who you are. Where you are when you're walking God, you could be questioning God or... God is even real, questioning church and questioning so much, questioning the pain in your life, and, and God wants to touch you today, and God wants to use you today, and God wants to remind you that the pain that you're walking through or that you just walked through, that he's going to use it, that every pain has a purpose, every struggle has a purpose, and he's got, God's going to use it in a big way, in a massive way today. So if you're here today, where every head bow, every eye closed. If you're here today, you need to give your life to God. You need to say yes to Jesus. Say yes to him. What we want to do is give you an opportunity to respond to him. And all we're going to do is that we're going to pray a prayer with you and we're going to believe God with you. And at the end of the service, you can come to the front and get a prayer and get a, a Bible, a free book, and all the resources you need to, to start this new journey with God, to get you signed up, to get baptized. Some of you all need to get baptized and we got that coming up. I want to pray over you. I want to pray over those who are walking through pain. I want to pray over those who Father's Day is not a great day for you. In fact, it's a reminder that your earthly father is not here or has been absent. I want to encourage you that God can even use that, that pain in your life today. God wants to heal you of your pain. 
God wants to touch you. Let me pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every soul, Lord. Lord, I pray a blessing over every soul, Lord. For every person here today that want to wanna say yes to you, God. They want to say yes to you, Jesus. Yes to your ways. Yes to your will. Yes to your Holy Spirit. God, would you touch them, Lord. God, I pray for the ones who are walking through hard times, hardship in their marriages, hardship in their lives. They're questioning their future. They're questioning what you're doing in their lives, Lord. God, I pray that you may touch them. Lord, I pray for every single father over here today, Lord. I pray a blessing over them. God, I ask that you may, you may use them, Lord, to do great things, God. Would you allow them to be even better fathers, even greater fathers? Speak to them, I pray, Lord. I pray a blessing over every soul here today, Lord. As we leave this place here today, Lord, let us walk in freedom. Let us walk in joy, and let us walk in victory, Lord. And we'll give you all the praise and all the honor. It's in the name of Jesus I pray and all God's people shout it. Amen. Come on, can we give God one more hand clap of praise? Well, hey guys, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Hey, join us if you have 25 minutes to go to our Discover Motivation. We would love to, you to join us in our, joining our dream team. God bless you.